Not to mention I was really good. She was there too. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. don't really yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sins the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, and come with the good news of your mighty deliverance. Drive the darkness from our hearts and fill us with your light. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Advent is recorded in the prophet Isaiah reading in chapter 35. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. Then will, the lamb, then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the Way of Holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 24. Thank you. 
then, brothers, until the Lord's come. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John the Baptist heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our sermon in number 317.
peace are ours through our Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus with the question, are you the one who was to come? Or should we expect someone else? His question has troubled Bible students for hundreds of years. Was John suffering from a weak faith while in prison? Or did he send his disciples because of their weak faith? Hundreds of pages have been written in Bible commentaries over the years, and I'm sure many more pages will be written about this particular scripture. It may remain undecided, but keep in mind Jesus' praise of John in our text. And then also remember the Eighth Commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Part of that is that we put the best construction on everything. We take our neighbor's words and actions in the kindest possible way. Whatever way you choose to look at John's question, the lesson comes out the same. John's disciples came to Jesus with a question which Jesus clearly answered. The Lord highly praised John the Baptist and testified that John was more than a prophet. And this morning we want to see in the way John taught that he was more than a prophet. And also there is much that you and I can learn from John the Baptist. John was in the prison of King Herod in Galilee because he had condemned Herod's sin of adultery. Herod had taken his brother's wife to be his own wife. That John had faithfully completed his ministry becomes clear from the fact that God allowed him to stay in prison. The Lord was not needing any further ministry from John the Baptist. He had fulfilled his mission. Instead, as a party favor to his stepdaughter, Herod had her presented with the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. It was in prison that John heard what Jesus was doing in the nearby countryside. So John sends some of his disciples to Jesus to ask the question, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? In other words, are you really and truly the promised Messiah, the Son of God? Are you the Savior of the world? I think that it is doubtful that John was asking for himself, albeit preachers can have questions, questions of faith at times, I'm sure. I don't think this is the case with John the Baptist because Keep in mind that his whole life had centered in Jesus, the coming Messiah, the Christ. From the day in the temple that the angel Gabriel announced to his father Zacharias that John the Baptist would be born, to that moment on the shore of the Jordan River when Jesus was coming down to be baptized, remember how John the Baptist said, Behold, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus testified about John here. He says, What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed in the wind? Did you go out to hear a preacher whose teaching and preaching were unsure? No. John the Baptist knew what he was talking about. He had a solid message, and that's why you went out into the wilderness to hear him. If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? Did you go out into the wilderness to see someone who was wearing expensive clothing like the court preachers? The court preachers who only say what the king wants to hear? 
though those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. John was in the king's palace, but in the prison in the king's palace. And you'll recall that John the Baptist wore camel's hair, not fine, expensive clothing. Jesus says, then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it was written by Isaiah in the Old Testament. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. By these words, Jesus testified that John was a prophet, but even more than a prophet, John was a true and faithful preacher of God's word, but he was also the immediate forerunner of the Christ, the Messiah. And so Jesus was announcing also that he, Jesus, was the promised Christ, the Son of God. When the disciples of John came to Jesus, the Lord said, go back and report to John what you hear and see, the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. How could have there been any more doubt in the minds of these disciples of John the Baptist that this Jesus was the promised Christ? They could go back and report to John. What John had taught them was now fulfilled. They had learned a wonderful lesson right from Jesus' own lips. Their eyes should have been opened to see the promised Savior. John the Baptist was a selfless preacher. His preaching was always that of preparing hearts for the one who would follow after him. John did not answer the temptation to have a cult following. Some of John's disciples at this point had already left John to follow Jesus. And John, if he were selfish, could have thought, well, I don't want to lose any more disciples. Could have developed a cult following around himself, but he had trained his disciples, and when the time came, he sent them to Jesus. If the hymn had been written at that time, these words might have been on John's lips. One there is for whom I am living, whom I love most certainly. Unto Jesus I am giving what in love he gave to me. John taught these disciples a soul-saving lesson by directing them to Jesus. In John's teaching and preaching and by his example, we learn an important lesson for our own ministry. John's whole ministry was dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. His mission was to direct people to Jesus. John was like a road sign pointing farther down the road, away from himself to a point over there. In John's case, it was like the very last sign pointing to the final destination. It's kind of like a sign announcing Mount Rushmore or Crazy Horse Memorial ahead. And it's the very last sign. And the next thing that comes into view is this large stone sculpture, either of the four presidents or of Crazy Horse. That was John's ministry, to point away from himself to someone a little farther down the line. Our efforts at witnessing ought to follow John's example. To be selfless. As we approach others with the good news about Jesus, our efforts are viewed by those other people as wanting to inflate the numbers in our church membership. Oh, they're inviting me to church because they'd like me to join Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church. How can we make our church grow? It may be what we have in our own mind when we invite others to come and worship with us. John the Baptist would teach us to be selfless, 
and point not to ourselves or to our church, but to Jesus. We ought to put ourselves and Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church out of the picture, those precious moments that we sometimes are given to talk about Jesus with a friend or a neighbor. We will want to invite those souls to join us in worship, but not as potential members. If we could just kind of put that out of our minds and think about their eternal welfare when we invite them to join us in worship. This is perhaps the best place for them to learn about Jesus. And it would be a natural thing to invite them to come and worship with us. But we need to see ourselves like John the Baptist as road signs along the way, pointing not to ourselves, but to Jesus. To be like John the Baptist, pointing ahead to the one who brings forgiveness and eternal life. You know, the holidays are a good time to invite people to join us in worship. People are sometimes more open to the idea of going to church. We, over the years, have thought of CE people, Christmas and Easter worshipers. Sometimes our members are CE members. They only come at Christmas time or Easter. And that's because people are more open to worship at those two times of the year. And holidays would be a good time for us to invite, 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 but do it like John the Baptist, not for ourselves, for our church family, but for the sake of that soul to bring them to Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. Lord God of Zion, who reigns from everlasting to everlasting, governing the lives of all generations, we come before you in awe and reverence. Accept our praise and adoration for your providence, which has sustained us to this present hour. Accept our grateful thanks for the abundant blessings you have bestowed on us through Jesus Christ. We confess that we are often blind to the greatness of your love. We have often been deaf to the hopefulness of your promises. We have often been speechless in extolling your name. We have lacked patience in dealing with one another. We have eaten our fill and failed to show proper consideration for the hungry. For these are many transgressions, forgive us, Lord. By the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen our weak hands and make firm our feeble knees. Give us fearless hearts and open our eyes to the abundance of your mercy. 
Help us to meet the needs of humanity. Keep us patient in the expectation of your coming. Raise us from the dead leprosy of our sin to the lively hope of salvation through Christ. Prepare a highway in the wilderness of our hearts so that the Christ, whose birth we shall soon celebrate, may enter and dwell within us eternally. In his name we pray. Our prayers are requested for Lindsay the Fowler, the Fowler's Mark and Beth's daughter-in-law who is experiencing some difficulty with the pregnancy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every day of health that you have given our fellow Christian and for every measure of strength that you have granted her body and mind. And now we come to you in this hour of concern asking you mercifully to restore her health and strength. Let her experience no further distress in her pregnancy. We dare to ask this of you, sinners though we are, because Jesus died for us, and it is for his sake that we can come to you with our petitions. O Lord of love, anoint all who are sick and injured with your balm of healing, Forgive each one of us his trespasses. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, we pray. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue our worship with hymn 661.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared when he called people to repentance and pointed to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. you planned our salvation. In grace, you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law, that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he was has destroyed death, and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will, will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
and the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith and life everlasting. Depart in Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Are we having a short lunch yeah. meeting this morning? We can do that right here. Right? Um, with the weather prognosticators talking originally that we might have below zero temperatures next Sunday with wind chills of 20 below, uh, Janine and I were of the opinion that we might probably just let everyone know that we wouldn't be having church next Sunday and uh, look for the service online. Uh, we were making some plans for that, but uh, now the weather people have changed their thoughts again, so um, it may only be in the teens as we will on Saturday night. So uh, the point is that uh, when you know that there's going to be really, really cold weather, check on your computer or your cell phone uh, what the plans are so that we wouldn't ask you to venture out in weather like that. And uh, we would simply plan to have church from our living room and uh, wonder how many times the cats and dogs have crossed in front of our camp. <laughs> uh, there's not many here. I'll probably send out a message to or uh, we got some Sundays left. Uh, our annual meeting will be on January 8th. Okay. And then the ladies will take on that. Please. Thank you. Not much with that. Not much with that. Of course. Of course. <laughs> on behalf of Janine and myself, we'd like to. Thank our church family for their kind and generous gift at Christmas time. We appreciate it very, very much. Do we want to catch a cup of coffee and uh, re reconvene for our meeting? We ask for everyone's prayers for a friend and an agent at um, Western Skies. Um, her husband passed away this past week, mm -hmm. and um, it was although. Yes, all of us still seem to difficult. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.